Now let's discuss audio. One of my favorite things about building is how much sound effects can bring a track to life. So let's go to tools and then audio. Here in the audio section, there are a few things we need to talk about. We have an event, two audio tools, and two sound sources. Okay, first, let's talk about the event we've not covered yet, the sound event. This event allows you to turn on, off, and toggle sound effects. Let's open up one and check out the properties. Most of these options we've seen before, so let's skip down to select sound effects. Here is where you select which sounds you want to turn on, off, or toggle. Next, let's check out the sound sources. There are two types of sound sources. Sound effect, which plays a single sound, and sound effect looping, which plays a sound that loops continuously. Let's check out sound effect first and have a look at the properties. The first thing we see is sound effect. This is where you select the sound you want to use. The sounds are arranged by category, subcategory, and then sounds. Next is enabled. For sound effects, you will usually want this checkbox unchecked because you want to trigger the sound with a sound event. If this box is checked, the sound will play immediately when your track starts and be done. So if it's farther down your track, you may not even hear it. Next is continue playing after checkpoint restart. Usually when you reset a checkpoint, the sound effect will stop. But by checking this box, the sound effect will continue to play even if you reset a checkpoint. Next we have static. The sound effects use the icon's distance from the game camera to adjust the volume. So when you're closer to the sound effect icon, the sounds will be louder, and as you move away, the sound will fade out. Check this box to make the sound the same volume in your whole track. You will usually want to use this when you have a looping ambient sound, like a forest or a swamp. Next is delay. Check this box and another perimeter pops up. This is where you set the amount of delay you want before the sound plays. Like most other time settings in the game, it's measured in game clock ticks and has seconds underneath it in the parentheses. Next is volume. This is where you adjust the volume of the sound effect. And pitch gives you the ability to change the pitch of the sound. A lower number will make a deeper, longer sound, and a higher number will make a shorter, higher, more tinny sound. Some sounds have a perimeter option that appears when you have them selected. These can include a variation of the sound, probability, the percentage of how often the sound effect plays, and other adjustments native to that particular sound. Next, let's check out sound effect loop. These are pretty much the same as sound effects, but they, of course, loop or play continuously. In the properties menu, we have the same options as sound effect, so nothing really new here. Sound effect is where you select the sound you want to use. You'll most likely want to check enabled in looping sounds so they start playing at the beginning of your track. And of course, like sound effects, you can turn them on and off with a sound event. If you're using an ambient sound, you may want to check continue playing after checkpoint restart so the sound continues playing if the router crashes and resets a checkpoint. If you want the sound to be heard throughout your whole track, you should select static 2D. Otherwise, you will only hear the sound when you are close to the sound effect loop icon. Now let's talk about the audio tools. We have two audio tools, the reverb tool and the sound controller. First, we'll talk about the reverb tool. Reverb is created when the sound is reflected off of objects in a unique space, creating a unique buildup and then decay of the sound. This changes depending on the surroundings of the sound, or in this case, the rider. This tool allows you to change the reverb in a selected area of your track. Let's open up the properties. The first thing we need to look at is preset. Here is where you set the reverb type you want to use. We have a few different options here to cover most any situation you'll need. Next we have start radius, represented by the red sphere, and end radius, represented by the blue sphere, both surrounding the tool icon. Start radius is where you want the reverb effect to start fading in, and end radius is where you want the reverb effect to be in full effect. The next and last tool is Sound Controller. Once you spawn one in the game world, you'll notice the familiar bubble around the outside of the tool icon. This represents the area affected by the tool. Now let's open up the properties. Once again, we have the start and end radius like the reverb tool, and it works the same. Start radius is where the sound control starts to take effect, and end radius is where the settings will be in full effect. 
If both numbers are the same, the effect will begin immediately when you enter the area. Next we have target sounds. Here is where you select the sounds you want to manipulate. You can select more than one sound source if you need to. You'll notice once you select a target sound, another submenu pops up. Target sound settings. In here, the first thing we see is sound name. Here is where you select the sound you want to adjust. With each sound, you can individually adjust the volume and pitch. With this tool, you can also choose to adjust the game music volume in the area by going to the Music Settings submenu. Adjust the volume to whatever you want, and the game music volume will be affected when entering the area. The fade between the start and end radiuses will affect both the game music and whatever target sounds you set up.